a little bit of choke, a little bit of throttle. Off you go. Hey, welcome back to Funnel Farms. Let me put a couple caveats right here at the beginning. When I'm talking about the best tractor for your farm, I'm not talking about industrial agriculture where you need massive bits of equipment and kit. We're talking more about small acreage, hobby farms, or a little homestead like ours. I got three very good reasons why this tractor is the best bang for your buck. This is a 1953 Ford Jubilee. And in my opinion, this is the best bang for your buck for a couple reasons. Now they made the Jubilee in 1953, and in 1954 it was the NAA. Previous to this, they made an 8N, which would be my backup choice. These things are very inexpensive. I bought this tractor for $800. I put a tire on it for a couple hundred bucks, fixed the points, fixed the contacts, bingo bango. For about $1,200, I had a running tractor. They're very, very easy to maintain. They're very inexpensive to maintain. You do not have to be that mechanically inclined to make them work. They're very simple in their construction. Gravity-fed carburetor with the Venturi effect, which means that as the air comes in through the intake, it pulls gas up in. Carburetor, super simple. This is even an original six volt system. As a matter of fact, let's start it up right now. Give you an idea of how durable these things are. The key has been bypassed. I have alligator clips that hook up my wires. A Little bit of choke, a little bit of throttle. <laughs> So let's talk price. There's two of these for sale currently in my area on Facebook Marketplace. One is about $3,500. It's completely restored. It's beautiful. The paint is shiny. Everything works on it just as it should. And it looks like it could be in a parade tomorrow. There's another one that's about $1,500. It's a little rougher looking. But again, everything works. That one's a 12 volt conversion, which is a popular conversion that people do. And when you think that the average riding mower costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $2,000, you can pick up one of these things and buy the finishing mower for the back or a brush hog used, again, 500 to 1,000 bucks. And for the same price as a riding mower, you now have a tractor that will do mowing and has a bunch of other things that make it incredibly versatile. And that's point number two. Not only are they inexpensive on the front end and inexpensive to maintain, but you can do all sorts of things with these tractors. They have a PTO on the back and a three-point lift, which means any PTO driven tool or three point lift tool that you can think of will work on the back of these within reason. There are some tools that are made for a higher horsepower tractor than this one, but that's okay. This thing is about 26 horsepower if memory serves right off the top, which is plenty to get done what you need to do. They also come with buckets. Mine doesn't have one, but you can find buckets online that fit these tractors. And with some moderate know-how and skill, you can get those attached and you will have a light duty, light duty bucket. You can't go pushing trees down, which I've tried to do. It's bad for them. <laughs> but you can take care of some of your farm chores. You can pull feed barrels out of your truck. You can pick up pigs when you butcher them. There's all sorts of things you can do with a bucket, pallet forks, those kind of things that fit on this tractor. They're small enough in terms of versatility to get where you need to go. You can fit them inside of barns super easy. They don't take up a lot of space when it comes to storage. The steering radius is incredibly small. Very, very nimble little things. And they're light enough duty that my kids drive them without much fuss. And the third point is reliability. These tractors are 70 years old. Some of them even older if you go back to the eight ends and they're still running. And these things are not barn kept necessarily. I have a current Ford that's a mashup between what I think is a 9N and an 8N that sat in a field for like 15 years. We dragged it out, cleaned out the fuel, put some new electronics in it, and she fired right up and goes. That thing's great. But if I were to pick, I would pick a late model 8N or a Jubilee because of some of the convenience factors. You don't have to have the clutch in for the PTO to work and for the three-point lift to work. On uh, the Jubilee, they're independent. It's not the case with some of the earlier models. The transmission, they added a few more gears. There's a Sherman transmission option. If you can find one with a Sherman transmission, those are great. They're slightly heavier duty in terms of the tires and the wheels and how much they can do. The Jubilees and the 8Ns compared to the 9Ns and the 2Ns, which are also great tractors. And there's tons of them. These tractors are 
everywhere. And the really cool thing about them being everywhere is there's a bunch of enthusiasts on the internet who will happily share information with you. There's some that will unhappily share information with you. <laughs> but for the most part, there's a great group of people that I've met online when I've had questions about these things who will steer you in the right direction. And if you're just moderately, moderately inclined mechanically, they can walk you through some things. And I have solved several problems with this old thing. But they're little old workhorses that have lasted forever. There's no computer chips in them. They're mechanically simple, they're inexpensive, they last forever, and if you just need something to putter around on your property and do work, these things are great. I've got a crane for the back of mine, box blade, PTO driven brush hog, two bottom plow, I have a harrowing disc, post hole digger. I think that's all that I have for it currently, but there's more things that I'd like to get for it. You can do so many things with these tractors without breaking the bank, and I hate to say it, but if something happened to it where it was irreparable, if you only bought it for $1,200, it's not that expensive to get another one. So in my humble opinion, the later model 8Ns and the 5354 Fords are just some of the best, hardest working little tractors you can have. There are other brands out there, other makes, you know, that are also great, but I haven't seen quite the same enthusiasm and I don't know if fan base is the right term, that these tractors have, and the numbers of them that they made are just incredible. It's in the hundred of thousands that they made of these tractors. The 8N is actually known as the tractor that fed the world because after World War II, when Europe's industry was decimated, they shipped over tens of thousands of them to Europe and they plowed all their fields over there and helped them start to regrow their agricultural industry. So the history behind these tractors is just great. And I fully expect that at some point when my kids and grandkids are of age that my little tractors that I put around on the property will be around much like these are. I mean, these things were built 30 years before I was born and they're still here, still kicking. So my name is Brian, this is Flannel Farms, and that's what I think. If you have a different opinion or if you agree, please leave a message in the comments below. I'd love to know what you think about it. But I've got some work to do with my little Ford tractor and that's what we're gonna get done today. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe. We'll see you next time here at Flannel Farms. Bye.